Hey, Bobby here with Coder Foundry. I want to talk to you about a coding challenge that we have been seeing when people are looking for jobs. And one of the things that we get is sometimes we get FizzBuzz. And you're probably thinking, FizzBuzz again? You've done videos on this before. Everyone's done this to death. And it's kind of true, but we're seeing it being asked in a different way. And so now they're taking basically coding challenges that everyone's been seeing but now employers are saying, hey, but can you do it this certain way? And so not only do you have to solve FizzBuzz, but you have to do it in the method that they want. Now we've seen this through with recursive sum, like you sum the values in an array, but use a recursion and don't use a loop. And now we've seen it with FizzBuzz and you can't use a loop and if then statements like the traditional way of doing it, but they want you to use a ternary operator. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this, and there's a lot to learn inside this very seemingly quick program. Um, but before we do that, I want to show you something. Um, over here on learn.coderfoundry, this is our learning platform, and I just want to show you some of the courses here that we have. And I also have the Complete Coding Bootcamp, Bootstrap, Interview, but right here is this Coding Challenges with JavaScript. And what you're going to see today is me using the stuff that we've developed there so that you can attack these coding challenges and you can hear and there's basically a lot of them in here okay a lot of coding challenges in here that you can go through and these are the most common ones we can um, we've seen throughout the course now I'm adding one to this um, coding challenge 12 and so this is a brand new coding challenge we just added it's going to be, be called fizzbuzz ternary now, the cool thing about this course is it's 100% free. All you have to do is come here and sign up, give us your email address, and you can get this course with some other courses that are absolutely free. And some of them, we obviously we do charge for that, and that's a subscription over there. All right, so let's um, check it out here, and uh, let's see if we can code this up. Now, th what you're seeing here is the website that you'll get. You go download this repo. It's public on our um, Coder Foundry GitHub and you can solve these challenges in here. The great thing about what we do is we always solve them but we also give you a way to display them so it looks a little bit uh, more user friendly. If you're sending this to somebody or you want to make this whole website and show uh, build a website about coding challenges you can use this and rebrand it for your own for your own use. So let's talk a little bit about FizzBuzz, what it is and what it's not. All right, so it's write a program that prints the numbers between one and 100 and for the multiples of three, print Fizz, and instead of the number or multiples of five, print Buzz. If they're both, we wanna print FizzBuzz, okay? Now, you must implement using a ternary operator and your method should return an array of values. And this is what I was talking about. A lot of times people are asking you to implement this coding challenge in a certain way. And there's reasons for that. Number one, can you follow the specification? Number two, um, what else are they testing for? Maybe they've taken something familiar, changed it up, which, which allows you to show a different range of skills or different knowledge about something. Okay, so for extra credit, allow the user to vary the range of numbers, maybe from one to 100. Instead, you could do one to 50 or one to 200. And the fizz and buzz values. So instead of three and five, maybe you make one that does four and seven. So we're going to show you how to do all three of those today. And this is how we're seeing fizz buzz presented now in coding interviews. The same way, just with the ternary, allow for variable input, this um, allows you to build more complex things or show off more complex skills. All right. So we're going to click this button here and it'll display our fizz buzz results a lot like the output that we have here. All right. So let's get going. And let's see if we can solve this. Inside of here, um, in this um, GitHub repo you can get, there are 11 challenges. Now I'm adding 12. This is new. And I'm going to show you how to do this one today here on YouTube. All right. So um, right here in all of them, we'll have a function here that just shows you how to display the values. Some are more complex than others. Your job is just to implement the actual FizzBuzz function here and allow this just to display it correctly. Now you can change all of this however you want, but um, out of the box, it controls how they're displayed. You control what's being sent to it, all right? So this has to return an array. So right here in our FizzBuzz function here, we have the signature put in and it needs to return an array. So one of the things that it asks us to do is, can you enter in variables to this function 
to be able to maybe modify the range, the one to 100, and maybe the three and five values, all right? So let's add some parameters to this function just off the start. And I'm gonna say fizz, buzz, and max. And my calling function here, that's gonna call this, we'll just go ahead and pass it three, five, and 100, okay? So right off the bat, We've made a function that takes in three, five, and 100 or any number that you want. So we've already done the extra credit part if we can use these values, okay? Now we need to return an array of values, okay? So let's create an array real quick. So let, we'll say fizzbuzz array. And we'll go ahead and return this array. Nice. So we've got our inputs and now we have our output and now our job here is to fill this array up. All right. So we want to go from one to 100 or in our case, we're going to go one to whatever the max is. Our default case will be 100 but you could vary this if you want by changing this value up here in the calling function or the calling signature. But we're going to say that we're going to go from one to 100. We're going to change that to go to one to the max. So the best way to go over a loop of numbers from one to whatever value is use a for loop. So that's what we're going to do. we will create a for loop here. And we'll say let, and we'll just call it I, and we're going to start at one. And then we want to go to less than or equal to the max all right so and then every loop we want to add one to that number all right and then here we'll do our work so this is a very simple for loop starts at one goes until the max in our case it'll be 100 but this could be 50 could be 20 and then for each iteration of this loop each time it comes back around we add one to it so this is just a standard for loop, all right? Now here comes the magic, what we gotta do. Now we're, we're saying that for a multiples of three, use the word fizz, but we have to use a ternary operator, okay? So I'm gonna create a, a variable here, I'm gonna call it fizz value. And that's gonna be either fizz or the number, okay? So how do we calculate if it's fizz? Well, we can use something called the modulus operator. So I'm gonna say the number, the current number that it is, if it's divisible by our fizz coming in, in our case, this is three. So three is the first one here. So this is fizz is three. Okay, so if it's divisible by three, and we check that by saying zero, okay? So this is a modulus operator. It basically returns the remainder of this division process. So um, the current number divided by three, what's the remainder? If that's equals to zero, then in fact, this is a fizz value. So if it's true, and this is the question mark for a ternary operator, the true part of this, we'll just say fizz, return fizz, else, we put a colon here for else, and we'll return an empty string. Okay, so this fizz value will be here, will return fizz or an empty string. If it's divisible by three, it'll return fizz. If it's not, it'll return an empty string. Now I'm gonna show you what's cool about this empty string here in a second, all right? So we could do the same thing for buzz value. And we can say i divisible by buzz or modulus equals zero. If that's true, return buzz. Else, return empty string. Okay, so now we have our two fizz and buzz values. Now this is where the magic comes in and using a ternary. And I think this is why employees are asking this is because of the way 
strings can be evaluated in conditionals. You can, there's a value where the string is true or false. It can, it can be a Boolean value. And what you have to understand here is an empty string will evaluate to false. If it has any values what's other than that, it'll value to true. And this is what this problem is testing for. So we can say let value equals, and we could take the fizz value plus the buzz value, and we can and we can say or this is our OR operator, the I. And this is the magic behind using a ternary operator for this, is this statement right here on line 22 that you see right here. And so if fizz comes back empty, and we add an empty plus an empty, this right here will evaluate to false, so it'll take this OR operator. So if we say if false or true and if you know anything about or operators it's going to take the true side of it so if this side is true then it won't take this side if this side is false it'll take the other side i okay all right so two empties added together equal an empty string and that will evaluate to false all right so just to put a comment here empty string equals false in JavaScript and in most coding languages all right and that's the magic here so what we can do here is we can just say fizz buzz array and we can push the value right into here because we're doing all of our work right here we're adding these together. If it's true, then give me the numbers here. Now, what also is true is if we have something like this that says plus buzz equals true. And, of course, fizz. Put these in quotes to make it accurate. Plus empty string equals true. put quotes around this just to make our comments if you're typing along with me here so that's more accurate of of like the types of values we can get here okay so these are showing you the true and false statements here what could happen we either have both empty it's false if one's empty it's false okay if they're both in here That also equals true. Okay, so that's kind of what can happen. And in the case of that, if this is false, you'll get this I value here. Okay, because the or statement will say, okay, if it's if it's true, I'm gonna grab this side of it because this side is false. If anything over here happens. That's my true value, and that's what it's going to take. And then I just push that value into an array, and then I return the array. So that's pretty simple. All right. So let's see if it works. All right. Let's so let's run our app here, and this should work. All right. And I'm going to hit enter, and boom, there it is, Fizzbuzz. And you can check it here: three, five, six, seven, eight, nine is three. And if you go to fifteen, three times five is fifteen. So both of those are divisible by. And you got fizz buzz, and it runs all the way out to 98, 99, and 100. All right, so that's fizz buzz ternary, but let's not stop there. So if you want to stop the video there, that's just fine. You want to go out and grab um, our coding challenges from learn.coderfoundry, that's fine. But let's look at one other thing that we could do with this to make it a little bit shorter. Now, there's a lot of stuff out on the internet. How can we do fizz buzz in one line? And while I think a lot of that is kind of intriguing, I don't think you want to do that in an interview because it's a little bit hard to see. And so I'll probably get comments in here when we come back and look at it, but did you know you could do this shorter? And the answer is, yeah, I do. But now that we know how this works, let's write a quick FizzBuzz B. All right. Be the same thing. And that way, if you're watching 
the video and you're typing along here, you get the full answer here. So I'm going to try to make this a little bit shorter. So essentially it does the same thing as this one, takes the same parameters. We're just going to make it a little bit shorter, showing our knowledge of like how um, this could work in a little bit shorter way. So I'm going to say fizzbuzz array, just like we did before, equals initialize it. I'm going to return it. Go ahead and return it so don't forget to do that. Okay, I'm going to write the same for loop. All right. So um, let's get out of here and say i equals one. I less than or equal to max and i plus plus. All right, so we got our array here. All right, so what I can do here is instead of doing what I did here in three steps, let's push this all down into just the push statement here. Let's see what's going on there, okay. Oh, I gotta put my function statement here, sorry. Okay. All right, so let's let's get back to work here. All right, so I can say fizzbuzz array dot push, and inside this push statement, I can do all of my work, and so I don't have to have these intermediate variables in here. So I'm going to just take this line of code here, put it here, plus I'm going to take this line of code, put it in here. And then I can say or I. And that should work the same as up here. In fact, we can test it by up here changing our calling function to B. Let's go ahead and test it out here. Boom, works the same. Okay, so it makes it a little bit shorter. Um, what I would say is if, you, if you're coding this on a whiteboard or you're coding it in person, um, I think adding the comments in here and having intermediate variables actually helps you explain the code to them. Um, if you do this all in one line even further, there's other ways you can do this in one line further. It may not, you may think you just copied a solution. You really don't know what's going on. You just copied a solution. But if you can explain ternary, um, and this or logic here and that a string empty string is false I think that's what they're looking for and you can put this in a for loop and it's pretty compact and pretty short all right well remember to go out to learn.coderfoundry.com if you want this free course here and I hope this helps good luck and keep coding